the dance. It sounds so good. They are singing so well. Yeah. It's uh, really emotional. <laughs> it is. It really brings you right back, isn't it? Hello and welcome to Things Musicians Don't Talk About with your hosts Hattie Butterworth and me, Rebecca Toll. Within our vibrant musical world, it can often feel that the struggles and humanity of musicians is lost and restricted. Having both suffered in silence with mental, physical and emotional issues, we are now looking for a way to voice musicians' stories, discuss them further and to connect with the many others who suffer like we have. No topic will be out of bounds as we are committed to raising awareness for all varieties of struggle. So join me, Hattie and guests as we attempt to bring an end to stigma by uncovering the things musicians don't talk about. Don't Talk About is supported by the Royal Society of Musicians. Since 1738, they have been providing vital financial assistance, advice and guidance to music professionals unable to work due to accident, illness, stress or anxiety. Whether you're working as a performer, administrator, technician or teacher and everything in between, they're there to help. If you know of someone in need, you can contact them in confidence by visiting their website, which is www.rsmgb.org, or you can contact them by ringing 020-7629-6137. Support their work by becoming a member or donating today. Welcome back to TMDTA, Things Musicians Don't Talk About. It's me, Becca, and it's actually New Year's Eve. Um, at the time of recording, I'm sitting in the study with my new fir tree candle and it's raining very heavily outside. It's very dark. I feel very cosy. I feel very reflective. Um, looking back over the past year, just done a little post on our Instagram about what we've been up to over the past year. And in my personal life, I've been reflecting a lot with my partner as well and kind of looking forward to our goals for next year and stuff which I don't tend to subscribe to I'm not a big new year's resolution person but for some reason this year it kind of spoke to me a bit more so I'm feeling very mellow um I'm also going out to a new year's eve party tonight so I'm trying to keep my energy reserved because I know it's going to be a long night uh But by the time you listen to this, it will be 2024. So happy new year. We have the incredibly uplifting James Partridge with us today, as you'll hear. I don't need to really introduce him much more than to say that he's that guy that you see all over social media doing those amazing primary school hymn banger videos that make everybody just go crazy. Uh, It's a great chat. I'm sure you'll have a great time listening to it. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. If you fancy supporting us via our Patreon, where we host our monthly support, peer support sessions, uh, head over to patreon.com forward slash TMDTA. You can also, we have a, like a fundraiser page and also a buy me a coffee page. All sorts of ways you can support us. Or if that doesn't speak to you please do share our podcast with a friend a loved one an enemy uh your nemesis anybody it really helps us to get our podcast out there if you share it with people you know um i would say like and subscribe but i feel very imposterish saying that so i won't say it anyway on with the podcast so we're here today with the amazing james partridge who I'm sure you will have seen TikToking around. TikTok. <laughs> Is that That's a verb official, now? TikToking around yeah. and the Christmas tree. bringing back all the flipping men's. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. How yeah. are you doing? How's life? Very well. I had a, a show last night, which was great fun. Had a lot of people packed into a, a cocktail bar in Smithfield. And Where you'd usually sing hymns, of course. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is the hilarious thing about it, because I'm trying to find venues uh, to, to put on the show. 
and a lot of, as I'm, I'm basically teaching all day and getting home and sending emails and saying, would you be up for uh, hosting a night of primary school sing-alongs? <laughs> and a lot of the venues are just like, uh, what? delete. <laughs> like, Literally. What, what is this? That's kind of the thing though, yeah. I guess. If, you, if you're not there or you like don't get it, mm-hmm. this, it sounds yeah. sort of sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just to be brutally yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then like, like the emotion that you get from people that's the thing, because I've it's actually had crazy. a number of people come on their own to the show because they haven't oh. been able to convince anyone else to come. And I, I absolutely love that because the one thing I kind of want to, to, for the show to do is to like build up like a community of mm. people that are just like, you know, up for singing along and getting into like a nostalgic kind of positive atmosphere. Yeah. And, and the nice thing is actually I've seen people come along on their own and make friends and, and, and you know... Where, where else can you do that, really, yeah, as an adult? Yeah, primary school. Yeah, so the first time I actually kind of thought of this idea, I, I did like a bit of a variety show, uh, and I did include some of the the bangers, um, and it was in a like a venue that's normally like a drag club. Yes. Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm playing in all sorts of different venues, so I was up in Preston and played in the next library, which didn't turn Sweet. into an art centre. Everyone going, shh. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> shh. Uh, fingers on lips, please. <laughs> and I played in yeah uh, Brighton Comedia, which is normally like a comedy club, and I guess yeah. the fact that it's so unique means that you, you can kind of pitch to anywhere. Yeah, like it's yeah, quite, it's quite kind of open as long as they don't delete the email. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'm, yeah. yeah, really, I think it'd be great if you just kind of take us back to like the genesis of your TikTok, I guess. Or, yeah. Or what were you? Who were you before this all? blew up for you what was going on and why did it all start yeah so I um I left uni in 2012 and then moved to London without a job which was extremely scary yeah and then did whatever I could to just live in London I I just thought to myself even if it means like you know standing on a street corner with a McDonald's sign I (laughs) I don't mind what I do as long as I'm in London because it's a place to be um, so I did like some temping jobs, then I worked for PRS for music for a couple of years, um, which was nothing to do with music. It was very, very admin based and um, slightly soul destroying, unfortunately. <laughs> but I spend my um, my lunch times going to the Yamaha piano shop <laughs> on Wardle Street and literally just like, I'd go out and literally spend the entire hour just like putting headphones on, play the piano. And then I'd come back to the work and then, yeah, get through the rest of the day. And then after a while, I was like, this is not really working. Mm. Um, I'd actually done a little bit of work for the Royal Philharmonic Society, which I absolutely loved. Um, and so I just, I helped them out with their award ceremony um, after I left PRS. And then I actually, this is, feels like a very long-winded way of working. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, how, it, how it came about. But then I, um, I had an audition for Gareth Malone's Voices. I don't know if you ever heard mm, of Yes. Um, which was amazing. And for me, that was a real game changer because... Uh, I'd sung in choirs all my life, and I, well, I, I, when I was at school, choir singing was not a cool thing whatsoever, and so uh, I tried to start like a barbershop group at school, and it was not cool. Um, <laughs> and then I did, I went on like the National Youth Choir and Eton Choral Courses and all that stuff, and I thought, oh, I finally found my tribe. And this was this was a lot of fun doing the Gareth Malone Choir because it was a choir of like. 18 to 25 year olds, mm-hmm. something like that, and we were thrown into this crazy thing. We did these amazing gigs, and then after that finished, I thought I can't go back to doing what I was doing. So I went freelance, and I've been teaching since then in lots of different schools. And it's a singing teaching, singing teaching, yeah, okay. and and piano, right. um, mostly singing. And then got to lockdown, and which was great for all musicians and everyone, mm-hmm. and took the teaching online, and I made loads of backing tracks for my pupils, because mm-hmm. teaching, singing on Zoom is a you know, hilarious yeah. thing, because you're, first of all, I tried to like play in time with them, and I was trying to preempt them by playing like one second ahead of them, you know, it doesn't to, work. to catch up with the, uh, with the lag, uh, but it didn't really work, so I just made a load of backing tracks, put them on YouTube, um, and then someone said to me at the beginning of 2021, oh, have you heard of this TikTok? And I was like, yes, it's the app for like people teenagers, dancing yeah. <laughs> and teenagers, yeah. <laughs> and I think at the time it pretty much was. Um, and then I started putting up some singing tips, some literally like, mm. or music theory tips as well, yeah. like, you know, how to, just trying to be really ambitious, how to read music in 60 seconds. So like teaching the, like the staff and, and how to read the treble and bass clef and all that kind of stuff. 
and then I did a few comedy skits, but literally it was like the, I don't know, like the 10th video I put up was, uh, actually it was Easter Sunday, and I was like, oh, we need some Easter content. Yes. <laughs> so, and so I, I put up a video which was my top five Easter hymns um, for Easter Sunday, and that did quite well when I put that up, and then I thought, the next day I was like, oh, uh, what else would be quite good? And then I, I remembered this book that we all sang from, which I have here, uh, and it's got a blue cover with a load of kids singing on the front called Common Praise. And, Ours um, were red. Uh, yeah, well, actually the red one was the update. Uh, yeah, so I put sorry, the, what can so, I say? I'm an updated gal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I, so I had the, the piano anthology, which, which was red. Yes. Um, and that had Common Praise 1 and 2. Oh. And it had all the songs, and I opened up the contents page, and I was like, oh my God. Morning is Broken, Water of Life, All Things Bright and Beautiful, Autumn Days, and the list keeps going on and on. All these bangers. So I thought, oh, let's make a top 10 of my favourite primary school assembly songs. Yes. Put it online, and it kind of went a bit wild. And that's the genesis. Oh that my That's a very long answer to your question. No, but then, yeah. where, where do you go from there, I guess? Mm. This blew up, and so were you like, people clearly like this, I'll make... On like separate videos of them, or yeah. So I think the initial thing was like I did. So I did the top ten, then I did like twenty, and then thirteen, forty. So I did like oh yeah. Uh, so I did I did quite a few lists, and then I kind of wanted to branch out pretty mm. quickly. So I, then I just stopped doing that idea, and then did some other things like uh, kids theme tune, like top ten, and then and then I was getting more into um, I did like some a cappella close harmony things like sea shanties and um, Beach Boys style harmonies and things mm -hmm. like that. And then I did a few like, here are five pieces of classical music you might not have heard before. Mm. Like that. But none of them got, like they, they all have got like nice reactions, but none of them had like the massive kind of response. Pull of did. the yeah. primary school yeah, yeah. nostalgia. Cause so, it's such yeah. a kind of weird reaction you get when you hear it again, I yeah, guess. What is it about, what do people resonate so thoroughly mm. with because it is it's a very like visceral nostalgia <laughs> yeah um yeah i get all sorts of comments uh on the videos so you just have like nostalgia unlocked yeah um, so true you know i haven't i don't know what i had for dinner last night but i remember the worst of these songs i haven't sung in 20 years yeah um i did actually have one of my favorite comments recently was uh, these songs slap harder than Will Smith at the Oscars. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Which is yeah, it's that's, so true. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think I think it's hearing something that you haven't heard in a long time, no matter what it is, it just puts you in a time and place, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's like songs you sung or a piece of classical music or you know a pop banger from the nineties, whatever whatever it is, it'll put you in a certain time and place. And I think a lot of people had very kind of, whether it's rose tinted glasses or whatever, you know, had very positive memories of mm. primary school and you kind of feel safe. And uh, a lot of these songs are just very happy and positive mm. and, and upbeat. And there's nothing cynical. I think one of the things is that one of the great things is there's nothing cynical about it. Mm. And I think a lot of things now in adult life are very cynical and there's like a, a hidden agenda to things and this is just like pure you know wholesome mm. joy mm. singing these songs mm -hmm. um so i think i think that's part of the reason why it resonates a lot mm. with people um and then obviously a lot of those memories come with like funny things that happened at school and yeah and all these other things so yeah i guess a lot of the like hymns are intrinsically linked to religion mm. and Christ are you are you religious well yeah it's an interesting it's an interesting thing, really, because I was brought up going to church. Uh, so I went, you know, I kind of grew up, I, I literally learned to read in my local church choir. Like, they were like, if you could, so I think I was five when I joined it. And then uh, just like did the Sunday school and all that kind of stuff. But it was more of kind of like something to do. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, so, and then I've sung in a lot of churches in London as part of like, you know, their choir or like depping around and things like that. And I would say that I'm not like actively religious. Mm. Um, and, but, you know, that was my up upbringing. Um, and I didn't go to like a church school or anything like that. It was just like a kind of normal state primary school. Um, and, but so yeah, it is, it is interesting. And, and the thing is, I've actually not really had much pushback against the religious stuff. Mm. I was wondering. Yeah. That, yeah. And, 
And one thing I really want to make sure is that it's it is a safe space for anyone mm-hmm. that comes to like a show or sings along or just watches a video and 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 I'm not pushing the religious side of it at all. Uh, but if you do have a faith and you want to take that from it, then I think that's brilliant and that's great. And I've had, you know, uh, vicars come to the show and yeah. things like that, and they they've loved it. And and that's the thing because so the, basically the way the show works is I kind of um, so actually just to set this up, I am doing a show off this of the primary school assembly bangers at the moment and touring it around the country, um, and uh, basically. It is a sing-along show, so I've got a, a QR code that people scan, and it, it pulls up a PDF that I put together of all the lyrics. Oh my gosh. And The best karaoke. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, you've got sing-alongs of all sorts of stuff, but you, there's not been anything of this. And and then I intersperse it with kind of stories from school, and I, I kind of structure it as part of the school year, so we, we go through, like, the, oh, the summer term. We've got the Harvest Festival <gasps> bangers, yes. I got the oh harvest my festival. gosh! Um, and I and then it gets to like the summer holidays when I talk about going on like cub camp and scout camp and uh, singing all like the campfire songs and uh, then we get into like uh, yeah TV shows we watched in the summer and Disney movies that we watched and all this kind of stuff. So um, how long is the show? Uh, it's so it's a two it's two hours with a twenty minute interval. Oh wow! Yeah. A lot so, of bangers. Yes, <laughs> yes, a lot of and and the, the funny thing is we get to the end and there's still a lot I haven't done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I've just in the last couple of shows I've done I've, I've started saying well, it's got to the encore and I, I normally finish it on a Beatles song and I uh, what, so I got to the encore in one of the shows and someone shouted out a request so the last couple of shows I said does anyone have any requests and everyone just keeps shouting all these songs so, yeah. and I, I try and pick out a few uh, that I can hear that you, that you actually know yeah exactly exactly. <laughs> that's yeah, so yeah. stressful yeah. I love it though yeah. but obviously a big part of I think why you've resonated with people and mm. the fact that you can do this show comes as well for like a natural way of speaking and performing mm. and like does being on stage do you enjoy being on stage you know do you like speaking and presenting is that something that you feel mm. you enjoy it and like it's brought something to your life or do you find it quite nerve-wracking it, well a bit of both actually it, it is very nerve-wracking and when I did first couple of shows I was physically shaking mm. and because it's such a new thing and and it was something that I've literally put together completely myself it's not something yeah. that I've it's not like I'm performing a theatre piece that has been yeah. written by someone else or have you seen anyone else do yeah yeah exactly yeah. so and um, so I I couldn't eat before it mm. I was I was shaking and I just thought oh, I don't know how mm. how this is going to go and then I do like a little like uh, a welcome song and I was kind of I, I listened back and you could hear my voice kind of quavering through it then it got to the first sing along which is uh, who put the colours in the rainbow and as soon as I started playing it everyone joined in and all of a sudden the nerves just kind of went mm. and it just felt really really nice and natural and mm. um, yeah and, and you know I still I, yeah, I've been getting nervous before each show because everyone's different I don't know who's going to be there I don't yeah. know how it's going to go I've, quite often finding a new venue so whether the sound might be okay but so far so good pretty okay. much and yeah. you found that people do sing yeah and enjoy yeah. the singing because I guess that would, that's yeah. what would freak me out is that no one would sing and I'd just be there like <laughs> yeah well that, that's the thing so basically I kind of wrote it so like to slightly in a foolproof way so that um, uh, if people don't sing it's not the end of the world okay. um, so I can just basically sing all of them and then when it gets to the end of the song there's a bit of chat a bit of um, yeah. talking you know some funny stories and I try and like interlink each section and, and keep it flowing so there's not really much time to have like dead like dead air in like mm. dead, dead space so if nobody sang along which would be totally fine and people can do what they want to do they don't have to sing if they don't want to um, then it would still be fine that's um, still brave yeah. Uh, I guess yeah. when you think about like primary school, like it seems like such a joyous mm. thing, and it kind of feels uh, almost paradoxical that there's like this aspect of nerves and like all this kind of stuff. And it's mm. like, no, even though it's still like a joyous thing, mm. it can still be a scary experience. And I think yeah. like people often think that about musicians and performing. It's like, oh, but you know, it's something that you love. Like, why would you be nervous? Yeah. Um, 
but it's interesting that you know even even with like primary school hymns mm. it's still a, it's forming. still a, yeah, yeah it's still, still your that. career yeah, yeah yeah i wonder like yeah. how because it feels like a lot of your content has been kind of um audience led like mm. you've been um creating stuff based on what you know what you the feedback that you've received sometimes more than i don't what know has it yeah kind of thing. Mm. has it felt like you've had to go with what your audience wants or have you felt like you've been able to do what yeah. you want <laughs> well it, i mean it, it is a funny thing because i definitely would not have thought you know that i would be <laughs> doing this and but but it's it's something that i have you know i absolutely love doing it and it brings me a lot of like personal joy mm-hmm. and puts me in like a happy place yeah. doing all of these songs and putting the show together and and I, th- I think one thing as well is that i put like the the show is basically like a love letter to um our basically to communal singing and mm-hmm. also to the fact that we were so lucky to have music teachers at school that actually taught us uh, not only these songs but other songs and all different styles and got us all singing together and and just the fact that we all did sing together which I think is so important and just such an amazing thing that not not every like culture has not every country has like group communal singing um, and something it's also something that we don't really do necessarily as adults unless you sing in like a community choir or you sing in a symphony chorus or whatever um, because there it, it kind of feels like there's a, a big gap between uh, people that just sing for fun and then like professional singers mm-hmm. and I think that growing well kind of like studying in a like a, a classical music degree and bit, being in the community of professional singers it feels like everyone everyone I know has done singing in some form um, and still does do it whether they're singing in a church choir or singing you know as part of like I don't know BBC singers or whatever um, actually probably not the best example <laughs> yeah. um, for now, for now. Um, but uh, but the fact is that you know across the UK anyway like most people grew up singing mm. and unless you sing uh as I said, yeah, in a community choir or like at a football match or whatever, you don't like people don't really sing. Or well, happy anymore. birthday. Uh, or happy birthday. That is communal. <laughs> yes, that is communal. Um, it's so true. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think that I would have originally thought of this had it not yeah. been for the reaction it got. Yeah. Um, and yes. So t- talking about like I guess your day job as well mm-hmm. and the teaching, do you think? I mean, how do you feel about teaching? Is it something that you enjoy doing? Because we both have quite mm. a complex relationship with teachers. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you, you know, is, yeah. is, is TikTok and, and these shows something you mm. would ultimately want to replace that? Or do you kind of always want to have an element of that side of your work? Yeah, well, I think it'd be, it would be good to, to keep both going, if possible. It has been quite tricky recently. Mm. Um, so at the moment I teach in four schools. Wow. So I kind of cycle around and uh, go in and do singing lessons uh, one-on-one. So I actually don't do the, the assembly singing in the schools that I go to. Because that's like, that's, you know, that's the head of music's job. Um, but yeah, so I've been, yeah, I've been teaching for about uh, eight years now, something like that, eight or nine years. And yeah, as I think, as you say, like a bit of a, I don't know, complex. Yeah, it depends on the school, depends on the students, like yeah. depends on the time well, of year. Depends on the parents as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, most most of my pupils and most of my parents have been lovely. Um, and But there, then the, the, there's like so many different issues that come with it. Like should yeah. people do exams? Should people, uh, should I mean, even at young ages, should they be put in for exams? And, and some parents are very keen for them to be pushed through as many exams as, yeah. quick, as quickly as possible. Um, and, and, and also the content of what is on the syllabus mm. and how basically singing is structured in lessons I don't always agree with and mm. actually a lot of the songs on the syllabus I don't think are suitable mm. to be sung um, especially by the ages of the kids I teach as um, in they're too advanced for the voice yeah, development yeah some, some of them are too advanced like the subject matter is not that suitable oh, some of them are actually like <laughs> yeah wildly inappropriate Nice. Um, you know, sea shanties Not... about like oh going to Amsterdam and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what was yeah. your relationship with your own singing education? Did you mm. enjoy it? 
Yeah, well, I had, um, I didn't actually have any singing lessons until I was about 17. Yeah, at 16, 17. So I, singing wasn't really encouraged on a like one-to-one level when I was growing up. But, you know, after primary school, when we sang all these classic tunes, um, I went to the, an all boys grammar and obviously it was the most uncool thing you could possibly do. Mm. And so while everyone else was um, outside playing football and rugby, I was in the music practice room playing the piano. Uh, and then obviously Who, got, you know. the girls <laughs> in the rain. Well, the, the funny thing is, I it, it wouldn't have been any of those songs because I didn't like. I think from the age of like I don't know twelve to probably two years ago, I didn't even I hadn't even thought about most of these songs. Yeah, mm. uh, I teach a, I, I teach a few of them, um, but uh, yeah, no. So, so my my re- relationship to singing when I was younger was quite like a, a fraught one. Yeah. Um, cause I very much felt like it was, yeah, not the cool thing to do whatsoever. Um, and, and it was only, as I said, when I did these like national courses and met other people that also loved this as well, that's when I was like, okay, no, this is like a legitimate thing to like and mm-hmm. it's, it's okay. Um, yeah. yeah so I think it, I, there are probably about like a thousand boys in the school. Um, it was a big, like, yeah, big state grammar school down in Dorset and, um, we didn't do any singing in assemblies. There was a bit of singing in music, but not really much after year eight. Um, and then, yeah, we, I, I tried to start a barbershop group and then like four people out of like a thousand boys were actually vaguely interested. And even then I it just like petered off. Yeah, he's like, you only need four, to be fair. Um, and one of them was my brother, so I coerced him into it. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. I did the same thing with my sister. I forced her into the chamber choir. Mm. Like I used to go and find her. She would be snogging her boyfriend. And I'd be like, you <laughs> yeah. should be in chamber choir. <laughs> there are more important things to do right Literally. now. Literally. Yeah. So That's cool. nice. I guess that, yeah, it like, I was the same that I had such like a difficult relationship with playing the trumpet. Like mm. it wasn't cool until I, yeah, had like a communal national youth orchestra or mm. like, or music school. Music school. Yeah. yeah. And I, I guess that is a testament to the power of communal music. Yeah. Um, so I, before the sorry no, no no I was just gonna say it's clearly very important yeah 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 for sure before the singing mm. lessons and stuff mm. I guess was piano the main focus for you yeah yeah so I I had piano lessons from about the age of five I think and um, my piano teacher loved like Burt Bacharach and people like that <laughs> so, <laughs> and so she taught me a lot of those kind of sixties and seventies tunes uh, as well as doing the grades so I did like every single piano grade. Um, up to grade eight, uh, and then, but I, I didn't. I actually, funnily enough, um, I haven't told any of my people this, but I actually didn't do any of the singing grades growing up. Wow. I didn't do a single one, and so when I started having singing lessons when I was about seventeen, my teacher was like an ex Heldon tenor um, from like he used to sing at Bayreuth and things like that, <laughs> and he was about seventy, seventy five, like late seventies, and but his voice was absolutely insane, yeah. and it was it was a very um, uh, rogue way of teaching, actually thinking back on it, like it was like some of the things were just very. I don't know. <laughs> like he used to get me to like slap his belly and stuff while he was singing, and like stand on him while he was like lying on the floor. One of my trumpet teachers did that as really, well. Really, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I, you know, if I did that now in school, I'm like, oh, like, immediate the, the, yeah, dismissal. Like, safeguarding alarm bells would be like going off everywhere. Um, but I mean, it was very inspiring in a lot of ways. Uh, but totally nuts. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess that yeah, it makes sense why you have a kind of broader perspective on people's mm. taking exams and stuff. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Like yeah, I I have a friend that's um, playing. I think he's on trial in Gothenburg. Um, plays French horn. He only ever took grade five. Yeah, <laughs> and, I love that. And it's just yeah. I mean, grades are such like a funny construct that mm. pupils. I mean, and especially their parents are obsessed with. Yeah. It's the parents. Yeah. yeah. They just want to show off. But yeah. then the children absorb that and yeah. then the children then become obsessed and it's like... It's, it's, kind of it's so hard. It? At school they put up the grades. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know, did either of you go to Cambridge? No. 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 At, so they, at Cambridge they had a, um, like the main building is Senate House and they, they put all the grades outside <gasps> at the end of the term and it, and it tells you like what you got and so like everyone's like going up, up to these, uh, <laughs> these sheets and they're like oh, this is, uh, you know, this person got this and this person got this and this is what happens at school. They put up the You're grades joking. and they, they say, they get put up the marks as well. What, um, like on a sheet of paper? Yeah. 
and so people are going, you know, the girls are going up to, like, I mostly teach at girls' schools. Uh, actually, no, I was just started at a boys' school, but um, anyway, uh, the, what, the school I've been teaching at the longest is, is a girls' primary school, and they all go up to the, the sheet and say, oh, I got a distinction, oh, I got a merit, I'm, why didn't I get a distinction? I think it's, that's so oh. tough, and then they're going home to their parents and think, oh, you should have got a distinction, not a merit. I think you did so well to get a yeah. merit. Yeah, it's like, like, it is really hard yeah. to get a merit. I'm yes. It's hard to do the grades themselves. It's yes. hard to pass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, oh my god. It's hard to get in a room, at, especially at that age, with someone you've never met, a complete stranger. Yeah. And perform in front of a complete stranger. Uh, sometimes they're they're nice. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes it can be quite scary. Yeah. Especially when they went back to school post COVID. All the uh, examiners wore masks and gloves and all sorts of stuff. And so far um, away, and like yeah. a big empty room. Yeah, exactly. And... So I remember, I remember when I used to do my piano grades. I was absolutely terrified yeah you know yeah. like genuinely like palpitations yeah <laughs> to be fair the place i did my exams was quite a creepy it was it was someone's house and oh. the the waiting room uh was just like the living room basically and they had like in my mind it was all in black and white uh and <laughs> they had like a tv in the corner which was like basically static they had one of those like japanese water features with like the oh my drop God. like a bit of water dropping creepy yeah and it was really creepy and you can hear you can hear the, the exam next door happening and Ugh. everyone in the room is just like staring into the abyss. You know? Sounds like cracks in the studios. <laughs> yeah. I was literally thinking of that. <laughs> but you can like hear the audition going on next door yeah, and everyone's yeah, sitting yeah. there like in the waiting room. like Warm up in this attic room. Yeah, waiting for their oh, execution. And you just think like, if that's your entry into music making, yeah. it's, doesn't, it's not really encouraging, is it? No. Um, for, for like a positive experience. No. Um, so yeah, it's that's... That, I, I do have mixed feelings about exams, very mixed. Um, and I get that it's great to have a goal to work towards. And some of the things you pick up in like an exam context are great, like um, just the ability to be able to perform and to memorise a piece, all of that stuff's great. Um, but even like the other things, some of the oral tests and the sight reading are just uh, not really that helpful, I don't mm, think. Yeah. And I think there are better ways to be, if you are doing an exam, to, uh, to work on your general musicianship. <laughs> But I guess like a massive, maybe going back to the beginning, mm. like a big part of why a lot of people resonate to you is it's a big escapism. Yeah. A lot of these yeah. songs and kind of like what you were saying, like obviously our world and even the music world, like forget it. Like it's it's quite depressing if you think mm. too long and hard about about all of that. But why do you think it's important that you exist online? Um, yeah. and, and kind of how have you seen the impact on people's like mental health and, and mm. well-being and, and just have, being a place to kind of escape and, and have mm. that purity? What's the impact of that? Do you think? Yeah, I think social media is like, it's such a huge, huge, oh, it's a bear moth of like an issue. Um, and there's, it's like a double-sided thing as well, because on the one hand, it can be a place of escapism and it can be a place of refuge. And if you are someone that is socially anxious or you know, you, you find it very hard to meet people or make friends, then it can be an amazing place to find your tribe, find your community online, whatever it is. Uh, and that's why um, something that you might think is extremely niche, and not, ne not necessarily what I do, but lots of other people have their niches and get huge followings from it because it's something that people wouldn't necessarily kind of come across in, mm. let's say, the real world. Mm. Um, and so uh, a lot of people do like TikTok lives or Instagram lives and, and people just sit all night watching these live streams where yeah. they might cosplay or something or, or whatever. Um, Have you ever done an all night primary school? Uh, not an all night one. But <laughs> You're, I can imagine your neighbours would be like, shut up, yeah, oh, <laughs> they don't yeah. care, you put yeah. the colours in the rainbow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it did. It, I think it almost got to that point during during lockdown because I, I I got engaged actually the week before. Oh, uh, congrats! The week before lockdown, and she's American, and she had never heard any of these songs before. What an education! By the end of week two, she was like, "Why do you keep singing songs about vegetables?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, and and so, um, it was slightly torturous for her, but I was I was doing when, when this yeah started picking up. Then I was doing a lot of these live streams and. Uh, I didn't do an all night one, uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, social media is, it can, yeah, it's got, it, it's got definitely like a lot of positives to it, but I've been finding more and more like really, really like severe negatives to, mm -hmm. to social media in lots of ways. Um, I think that 
it's, it's interesting actually being on social media and also teaching at primary schools yes. because some people have they have no connection with social media at that age which is great I think uh, it's, it is extremely hard to kind of stop people yeah. under the age of 13 from being on social media uh, but I think they really really should if possible but I mean it's so hard to stop them from being on it um, but those that aren't on it they don't really even think about it but those that are it, it just consumes them you can tell yeah. which ones are and which yeah. ones well, aren't. yeah exactly and I and I hear children as young as like five like singing songs that I know are like TikTok viral yeah. I think you've been just like watching TikTok all night um, and a lot of uh, my pupils come in and say oh can I sing this song yeah. they want to sing a song that is viral and they'll know like 10 seconds of the song and they want to sing that bit of the song for, which is viral on TikTok and um, you know you're not technically allowed to be on TikTok if you're under 13 um, but I have because I, I teach privately at people's houses after school as well and I go back and I see some of these kids on their phone you yeah. know literally as soon as they get home, mum, where's, where's your phone? I want to look at TikTok or whatever. And they will literally sit for like two hours just scrolling through it. And that's at the age of like eight, you know, and think what that is doing. And actually, you know, some of the videos that come up, it's, you can't really please it that well. No. Um, and especially a lot of the live streams, because the way that TikTok work is every like five videos you scroll through, it will come up with like a, someone doing a live stream. Mm. And I've actually kind of stopped doing lives because... Um, I really don't like the culture around it mm. um, and there are a lot of really really inappropriate lives mm. like completely inappropriate you know um, people you know undressing or all, all sorts of stuff Wow. and a lot of the comments are just horrendous as well so um, and it's not just the lives a lot of like the, the videos that come up are also just wildly inappropriate for mm. children to look at um, and I guess you know if you are the company you could argue well they're not supposed to be on it anyway because it's yeah. You know, you've got to say, I am over the age of 13, but you can't. But anyone can do that. Exactly. And yeah. in terms of like, because obviously a lot of your career focuses on being on social media. Has mm. it had like negative impact on you? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, I, I've tried to come to terms with it a bit more, but I think it's, it is, it is hard because when you create things online and you know I'm sure you guys know this like if you put something online and it doesn't quite have the reaction you think it might have had or it doesn't you know it's because social media is such a tangible thing it's like you got 20 likes on this post as opposed to the last time where you got 50 likes you think oh no what have I done wrong yeah. mm -hmm. you think it's all about yourself where you know most of the time it's not at all it's just about whatever the algorithm picks up or whatever is like slightly more controversial that people might um, comment on um, so yeah, I, I've stopped looking at likes and I've, I've, I try, like, I try and like keep it on top of comments and stuff, but I've stopped kind of like going through every single comment and, th and trying to reply to everyone because it is, it, it's really draining and, and it just puts you in a really negative mindset mm. if you're, if you're constantly kind of comparing yourself, mm. not, e not even to your own posts, but to other people's posts and you think, oh, you know, this person got like 2 million views on literally just like laughing at another video like yeah. you know like reacting to another video and uh so you think well, what have i done wrong i did you know i, I made a a video about shop and i was like this is really cool i find this really interesting yeah and it got like ba basically no reaction yeah uh but a few people like a few weeks later and i felt kind of bad because i spent a while like you know going around uh and like filming this and putting it together and then a few weeks later a couple of people completely separately said oh i love that video you did on Chopin, it's completely different to what you normally do, Aww. but um, so I guess different people like different things, but yeah, but I guess you have to stay yeah. true to what your interests are as well. Mm. Because you know, much as I'm sure you enjoy the primary school mm. stuff, there are other things in your musical life to yeah. fulfill, yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. You can't just do that all the time, so I yeah. think, like, no matter what the likes are, we find this as well. I think, like, sometimes you just need to creatively. Mm. Do make something for yourself, you know, to yeah. that, that's just more in line with. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, yeah. otherwise it can become so like you're just hopping from one thing to the next, and you're basing all your Engagement. internal yeah. happiness yeah. on like external factors. Whereas actually, yeah. that can just stop at any moment. Mm. Like, you know, what if somebody else came along on TikTok doing basically what you mm -hmm. did? But 
I don't know, people preferred them for whatever reason. It's like yeah. everything is so fragile. And actually, as long as you're kind of finding kind of authenticity or whatever mm. in your own work and enjoying it, then it doesn't really matter what the likes are. But yeah. then it's hard if that's what your business is based on yeah. a lot of the time. Um, do Have any of your students kind of found you on <laughs> uh, TikTok? To, to be honest, not that many. Okay. A couple of them have. And, and again, with those pupils, they've been like, how many followers do you have today? Like this week, have you got loads more followers? Because that's all they're interested in, like oh, how many followers yeah. you've got. Because um, it is pretty cool that you, how many you have got, I guess. But even the fact that you're saying Sorry. that, you, is like, yeah. why is it like, yeah. it's so funny that that becomes like... And, and that's actually something that I've changed my mindset on how I approach social media. Because at first, I think when things start picking up, think, oh, you know, this is amazing. I'm getting all of these followers on a certain platform. And I need to just keep doing more and more to get more followers. And then you think, actually, that's such an that is, you're you're fighting a losing battle then because it's, it's yeah. it will never be enough. Mm. Um, because you know even if you've got like a million followers on a platform, you'd be like, yeah, I've got a million, but why don't I have two million? Mm. So, uh, and the main I think the main thing is just finding uh, the right content that is true to what you uh, like your your vision, like like your uh, mindset, and and finding a way to to bring some positivity to the world it's on online and I think that's what's great about what you do on this podcast because you're you're literally talking about things that musicians don't necessarily normally talk about mm. and I've not you know I've, I've, I've heard other podcasts talking about you know if you're a bus- in business or whatever you talk about you yeah. know I found it really hard to set up my million pound business or whatever <laughs> <laughs> I feel really depressed yeah, cool. um, yeah. Uh, but you know musicians it's I think like the, the whole great thing about this kind of uh, primary school thing that's picked up is just building that community and I think that musicians need to have each other's backs for sure mm. so being able to talk about all of this stuff is amazing in what you what you do on this podcast thank you um, I guess you're not one of many in the sort of viral music well and that's what no. I was going to say like music or like especially classical music tiktok and yeah. or all social media it feels very beh- like classical music as a whole is very behind everything yeah. else so actually a lot of classical music social media is still like very positive or very mm. like kind of happy clapping happy cla- yeah. or just like not very real yeah um i actually do a little bit of work for decca classics nice um as like a social media person in, mm-hmm. not in terms of like posting for them but um i essentially like scour social media for what's happening in the classical music world and you know i, I make a pack every month um of like who's doing what and just they kind of keep on top of what everybody's doing kind of days class- of practice in, in classical <laughs> music um whether it's whether it's something more fun or whether it's like an existing artist or whatever um, but yeah, classical music is in an interesting place, and there's some people doing amazing things, like really, really amazing things on social media. And I think the the more that people who don't have an interest in classical music can engage with it, the better. Mm. Um, so if social media is a way to do it, then that's great. Whether it's through like funny videos, you know, it's like I've, I've seen quite a few of the things like uh, you know. Um, people in 1720 when Bach dropped this banger and they're like just <laughs> yeah. like raving to, to Carter and Fugue or whatever um, uh, or, or it could be more like um, slightly more educational or it could just be like a play along video yeah. with like I think it's like the London Philharmonic Orchestra oh yeah uh, they, they do a lot of uh, is it them or is it LSO? No, it's LPO where they do LPO. like um... they have the score that goes yeah. along underneath it yeah that's great I love that um, these are great I love them. Mm. Yeah. but it is that thing of like I don't know, I feel some people are very against like what they call the dumbing down of classical music and it's like, no, yeah. it, it's just bringing it into the relevance of modern day society and like you can't have something that's supposedly relevant and isn't on one of the biggest, mm. you know, social media is so ingrained in our lives now yeah. and we can't extract ourselves from it so we've got to go with it. Uh, mm. it's, it it's actually been really interesting talking to classical musicians about it because some people have a mindset of, oh, I wish I could. I wish I could do social media, but I can't. I can't do it. Yeah. Um, I'm too far removed. I've heard a lot of people say yeah. that. Because mm-hmm. some, some people's accounts on Instagram especially go really, like, mega viral. Like, not necessarily viral, but, like, they get lots of followers just yeah. by literally 
recording themselves practicing the clarinet or something or the cello or whatever and they'll just have like a post maybe like three or four posts a week of them just practicing and those posts will just get a lot of a lot of traction but then you get some like the big like people that are doing really big things in classical music that don't want to touch social media mm, yeah. and say oh no that's not for me I, I wouldn't want to do that don't get me started on their websites. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, some yeah. of these like and I kind of, stratospheric yeah, positions, like yeah, I kind of feel like I don't know. Are you not doing it because you don't want to, or because you think it's like too, I don't know, dumbed down, as you say, maybe. But like, uh, but, we or, need or, to yeah, have those people yeah. on there that are doing something different that yeah. aren't just going with the trends or whatever. Like, yeah. imagine having somebody completely like. If you are famous enough in the real world, you will get that many like you'll get followers on and then if you just put your own stamp on what you think social media should Mm -hmm. be that's going to change things for the better i saw a hilarious video of carl jenkins uh, uh, you mean Meghan markle (laughs) slash Meghan markle yeah he's saying that i i am not Meghan markle Uh, i'm carl jenkins (laughs) Uh, uh, you know having to release that statement that's hilarious uh but you know he he did it really well and 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 i think more and more people are are getting on it and um even, you know, someone like Andrew Lloyd Webber, mm. who, he doesn't need to do it. And like, whatever your views on him are, uh, but uh, he's, he's, he does, like, duet videos and things yeah, like that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's quite fun. I think, I think more people could do it. No, that's but true. I, think, I think, you know, I totally 100% respect anyone's decision as to whether or not they do social media or, yeah. or not. And, and for a lot of people, it just, it, like, it isn't the right thing. And it, it would bring, like, a, an extra level of anxiety to yeah. something that is already so... You know, it's, it's so precarious in terms of work and um, if you're putting yourself out there. And a lot of people don't like filming themselves, mm-hmm. which is, it, it is a very, very tough thing to do to set up a camera and film yourself and, and, and put it out there for the world to see. And I think actually before TikTok, um, I felt extremely self-conscious about putting up anything online mm-hmm. in, that, in that way of, of filming yourself doing it. And then when TikTok came along, because it was so informal, I was like, oh, it doesn't really matter because it's basically just kids mm-hmm. dancing anyway. Yeah. So, um, that's why I was, in a way, it kind of, it, for me, it helped a lot of my kind of self-doubt and, and like, perfectionism and mm. stuff like that, because it didn't matter as much. Mm. Um, it still slightly feels like that. Yeah. I still feel like I'm, I want to put some videos on TikTok that I wouldn't put on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that's about. Yeah. Do, you, do you have that one already? Do you think it's because our Instagram feels... Like, there's a lot of people we know following yeah. us. Yeah, right? my family are all on it, but then none of them are on TikTok. Mm. And yeah. Like, yeah. Know, it just feels more, like, important, like, in terms of what we say on there rather than TikTok, where it could yeah. be a bit more, like, throw away and even slightly more controversial or... Yeah. Ooh. So what we normally do at the end mm. is, is a kind of, like, win of the week. So we just say something small from our week that's been, like... Okay. A positive, I guess, or like something we're proud of. Or... Mm, um... I'll go first. Okay, go on. I've never gone first, I don't think. Um, I finished my um, CBT, 10 weeks of CBT therapy on Tuesday. Um, which, yeah, it's been like amazing. Yeah. It's been completely like I was um, very skeptical of CBT before I started. And um, yeah, it's just been amazing. And like, as much as I. <laughs> didn't resonate with some of the exercises that we did I did do all the homework and like I kind of threw myself into yeah. it That's yeah. awesome. like I finished on Tuesday and that was good and yeah. like felt like really nicely rounded off and I felt that I could be really honest with my therapist about like what had worked and what hadn't worked which is usually I'm like like with my yeah. last like awful therapist I didn't give any feedback because I was too scared that so there's no be... like mutual trust there no yes. but I was very honest with this one which mm. was bueno yes legend yes so what, what did the course kind of entail um it's we started off well i i think i'd referred myself because i was feeling like overwhelmed with a lot of things so we did like working on what are my symptoms and then what are my like negative automatic thoughts that kind of come up i I worked especially on like audition rejection and that kind of stuff which was tricky because um yeah, same as so many therapists. I don't, don't really understand freelance musician mm. life. Mm. So she was like, so can you do like another audition? And I was like... I've done 25. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or like, you know, she kept calling them interviews, not auditions. Right. And, and like these yeah. kind of things that like don't really matter. But like, mm. so yeah, did a bit of that. And I've just done actually a whole 
half an hour video on our Patreon about what went down in oh, CBT. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was great. Like, everyone, everyone subscribe to Patreon. Everyone, <laughs> yeah. Do you have Patreon? No, I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can, in all, in all honesty, just tell them to go to ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't We're know. not rivals. No, uh, no. We will get so. you to shout out your TikTok and everything. Not yeah. that you need to, but uh, yeah. do you have your win of the week down and ready? Well, I'll, I've got to... Yeah, okay. I'm going to say something from last night. because yes. So last night I did this show um, and... I already mentioned one thing which I loved, which was the fact that people came on their own to see it. Yeah. And there's just something about that. It actually made me feel quite emotional. Yeah. Because it's so tough doing anything on your own. And some people, you know, find it very, very hard to, to even get out the door on their own. And the fact that they've made the effort to, to you know, buy a ticket, come on their own and travel to this unknown location <laughs> with a load of people they don't know <laughs> singing along it's quite a scary thing so it's massive um that that was for me like a yeah definitely just an amazing like beautiful moment but there's there's i met a couple last night which they they taught music in china wow. in like a really rural province of china and they said that during lockdown uh or you know whenever it was they would get a school bus with the kids every day to, to the school and they they all wanted music to play on the school bus and every single day, they said every single day, they'd play uh, my videos on a Bluetooth speaker <laughs> because oh it made them feel my. happy and it reminded them of home because they couldn't go home. Uh, so, yeah. That has made me so emotional. Which, and, and this is in some like really random rural province of China that they that they were like blasting out these songs on a Bluetooth speaker. That must make you feel so like. And uh, they came along to the show last night, and it was yeah. So that was an amazing story. Yeah. I had to share that. Have you had any proposals at a? Uh, not yet. As, <laughs> I was gonna say that would be like the funniest place to be like. I'm gonna propose to my girlfriend. Tonight. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, a couple came to my show and they got engaged. Well, actually, it, it, it would be a good place to propose because, you know, at the last show there was a vicar. So the vicar, the vicar's <laughs> there already. Immediate marriage. Just get married. And yeah. I'm there on the piano. I can play the hymns, you know, oh, and then everyone can else can join in with, yeah. I do, uh, I will, like, we will support you and all yeah. that stuff. So Forget I, friends and family. Yeah, you just exactly. have random as what you say. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I also sing with a function band. Um, okay. And I've been doing that for about 10 years now. And so I've sung at lots of weddings, mostly as part of the, the band in the evening. Oh, wow. Um, so, and, and, you know, uh, in the past, sung in the choirs for weddings and things like that. But uh, not had a wedding yet. A joint venture. Uh, yeah, that, that'd be fun. Yeah. Oh, well, a lot, a lot, actually, the funny thing is a lot of people, uh, when they do get married, they sing these songs because they are, if they didn't go to church or yeah. whatever, they'll think, okay, what songs are suitable? Um, so I have been to weddings where they've, well, I've, I've played like One More Step Along the World I Go or Shine Jesus Shine and oh. everyone just loves it everyone joins in into the sing song so um, yeah no I think actually that, that, I wouldn't be surprised if it does happen actually one it's day one day yeah Hattie so I was like oh I shouldn't say this because it's too personal for a robot mm. can <laughs> we'll just cut it out. This is a personal podcast, right? Yeah, literally. So, yeah. two days ago, I made a year self harm free, yes. which was like massive. Yeah. And I actually like glazed straight past it, didn't even realise. Mm. I realised yesterday. Um, so, yeah, like it, I think that kind of shows that with things like addiction, the first few months, you never, like, I could never imagine myself making it to a year. Mm. But then, mm. like, recently, it's just become such a thing in the background, which is, like, amazing. It feels amazing now that it doesn't have this, like, sort of struggle every day of getting through. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, You're not checking the app every day. Yeah. Like, one more day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now, like, it just felt massive and quite, it sort of says a lot that I you didn't notice. missed it yeah, yeah that's great um so like that is the win of the year really i think it's yeah yeah year and day year and a day very good so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, but this has been so lovely yeah thank you so much thank James. You. yeah it's been so lovely thank you this way. Um, that's right um you've got to shout out your oh yes so tell us your instagram tiktok and then tell yeah. us the shows you've got coming up so yeah. anything else you've got coming up yeah, I don't know when this will go out um, in terms of like show dates and stuff. Um, Just give it all in the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the TikTok and Instagram pages are James 
at James P. Partridge. Um, and the show is called Primary School Assembly Bangers Live. Uh, but it's not just the primary school songs. We, we do some musical theatre, we've got Disney, we've got like TV theme tunes from our childhoods, we've got all sorts of stuff. So wow. it's, it's all there. It's just like a total like, escapism nostalgia fest. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the live show. And I've got, uh, so today on the day of recording, I'm going to go up to Leicester. Then tomorrow I'm in Cardiff and then I'm, I'm doing a lot of other shows in June and July as well. It may be an obvious announcement, but it is no longer 2023. So these next dates that James announces are completely irrelevant, but we thought it'd be nice to keep them in because it's really lovely to hear what he's up to. Um, But please do check out what he's doing in 2024. Hattie and I are really rubbish at getting these episodes out in a timely fashion. Look, we're mentally ill. What can I say? I'm doing some cool venue. I'm going to Southwold Pier. Wow. And singing on at the end of the pier, uh, and then off. doing Sheffield and York and a few other places. Oh, as well. nice! Yeah. A lot of traveling. Yes, yeah. What does the future look like after the shows? Anything fun or just kind of? Um, I so yeah, I've got a load of um, wedding gigs with this function band I sing mm. with, and also I'm going to do a Christmas show. <gasps> Spoiler! Uh, yes, I'm I'm putting together a Christmas show, and this will be like. That would be great. The Christmas assembly bangers with like Christmas number ones and Little like dog. exactly and then we'll all have like Christmas crackers and mince pies and mulled wine and it's just gonna be a wholesome like We will be there. So yes, yeah, so I'll let you know when it is. And, thank uh, you. Yeah, that will be a lot of fun. I think. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you yeah. so yeah. much. Woo. Woo. Great.